Let's look at part four where we have to use exponential and logarithmic rules to simplify an expression. And we saw before that these are these steps are integral in solving equations that involve exponential and log expressions, but we have these problems just to practice the rules so that we're able to apply them when we have to solve equations. I don't have a lot of room on this uh, on this slide, so I'll probably write some of them on the next on the next slide. So let me start with number three and four, since I have room under them to write here. And then I'll just copy the other ones to the next page. Uh, in number three, we, uh, we're trying to apply the rule for adding two logs, and we know there is a rule that says the log of A plus the log of B is the log of A times B. In other words, the sum of two logs is the log of the product. But that's not quite what we have here. We don't have just the sum of two logs. We have this extra two that's sitting outside. So the way I deal with that is I use the other rule that we talked about first. So my log of X is there. But this second expression, I'm going to rewrite as the log of x plus 1 squared. This 2 that's outside of the logarithm can be pulled inside the logarithm as a power. We usually see that rule the other way around, where the power is brought outside, but the two things are equal. Now I really do have the log of one thing plus the log of another thing. And so I can use the rule that says that that will be the log of the product of these two things. And so there we have a single logarithmic expression. There's a bunch of mess inside, but still it's a single logarithmic expression that's equivalent to the original. In number four, life is a little bit easier because this is log minus log. There's nothing else going on, and so I can jump right into the rule that tells me that the log of a difference, sorry, the difference of two logs is the log of the quotient. So this is ln. So the difference of these two logs is the same as the log of this quotient. It is possible to simplify this because the de in the denominator, an x can be factored out. The denominator is the same as that. And we know that in a fraction, if we have a multiplicative factor in the top that matches the bottom, we can cancel them out. So in the top, that's 2 times x. In the bottom, it's x times something. So because it's times in both places, I can cancel across that division. And I just end up with natural log of 2 over x plus 1. I'll move to the next page uh, and rewrite the problems. So the, the first problem, again this is part 4, is 1 quarter 2 to the x times 4 to the x plus 1 times 2 to the 3 minus x. And I know that if all of these were the same, had the same base, I'd be able to use my laws of exponents to combine them. So I will make them all the same base. So this is 1 over 2 squared. This is 2 to the x, already base 2. 4 is 2 squared, so this is 2 squared to the x plus 1. And then 2 to the 3 minus x. Um, I have the, some power to a power in here, so I have some parentheses to resolve in this term. So let me write 1 over, actually, let me just make this a big fraction. So I've got 2 squared in the denominator. So on the top, I have 2 to the x times the thing I underline is going to be 2 to the 2x plus 2. Remember, when you have a power to a power, the, the exponents we're going to multiply. And then 2 to the 3 minus x. So in the top, I'll just add those exponents. So I'm adding x. 2x plus 2 and 3 minus x, so that's 2x plus 5. If I add the exponents that are in the numerator, divided by 2 squared, and I know if I have a fraction, power of 2 over power of 2, then that simplifies to 2 to the power, that's the difference in the two powers, so 2x plus 5 minus 2 is 2x plus 3. So I'm just using all of my rules, but um, eventually I'll get to the 2x plus 3 as a simplified form. So in number 2, it's very similar to that. It already is written as a fraction, so we don't have to worry about that, but I have 5 to the x, 5 to the x plus 1 cubed, so I know I have to resolve that, and then 5 to the 3 minus x. So I don't have to recognize any weird powers of x here, I just really need to use my rules. In the numerator, I have 5 to the x, and 5 to the 3x plus 3, 
again, my, my powers are going to be multiplied in this expression over 5 to the 3 minus x. So in the numerator, if I add the exponents, I have 5 to the 4x plus 3. In the denominator, I have 5 to the 3 minus x. Because that's a fraction, I'll subtract the top power minus the bottom power, and I'll have as my new power 5x, and that's it. The plus 3 and the 3s are going to go away. So this simplifies to be 5 to the 5x.